everyone, welcome to the I Heart Podcast. My name is Jonathan North, and this month, I Heart Christmas. Today's episode is sort of a regular episode, but I think I'm just going to call it a bonus episode because I'm really just republishing a video from my YouTube channel to my podcast. Last year during Christmas in July, I had Rachel and Amber of the Hallmarkies podcast on to talk about three of their favorite Hallmark Christmas movies, and we made three videos from that discussion. Those movies were A Very Merry Mix-Up, The Nine Lives of Christmas, and Trading Christmas. Back then, I was still fully producing every video with footage, music, the whole shebang. And unbeknownst to me, the Hallmark Channel does not like you using any of their footage for any reason, and they issued a strike against my channel, removing all three of the videos we made. This was like two months after the video went up, so it was definitely done on purpose and not a bot picking off one of my videos. So back in December, I re-edited those videos into a podcast-length video with no footage, partly as a way to say I wasn't going to let the man keep me down, the man being a rom-com and reading card corporation, but it was also sort of a way to test the waters for what would become this podcast. That video is still up on my YouTube channel if you're curious, but it will essentially be the same thing as this episode, just with a different intro and outro, with a bit more salt aimed at Crown Media. Anyway, that's in the past. The strike is long expired, so let's get on with last year's Christmas in July with the Hallmarkies podcast. So we'll start with a very merry mix-up. Rachel, why don't you just tell us somewhat about what it's about and then why you picked it, why you liked it. Then Amber, you can talk about your thoughts and then I'll go over my thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So I picked this one because I think it's emblematic of a lot of the best things that you get in Hallmark. It is kind of a silly story, but it's... uh, it's charming. I think the two leads have good chemistry. I think that they do a pretty good job creating motivation for each of why the characters are behaving the way that they do. They're definitely like kind of silly versions, but that's kind of part of the fun of this type of old school romantic comedy uh, that's got a little bit of maybe a little bit of screwball element to it at times. Um, it's the kind of thing that I think that you would see from the studios back in the 50s, 60s, old-fashioned family Christmas comedies. And, uh, and that's kind of what Hallmark is doing. Alicia Witt is, is uh, one of the funniest as far as her. She, is, I think, has pretty good comedic timing. and She can sell some of those scenes. Uh, I think that it's just a, a fun, enjoyable concept. The idea of her like being with the wrong family is sort of funny. And overall, it's just really enjoyable, I think. And uh, it's one of Amber's favorites, actually. Yeah, so I think overall, just as a high concept, I think it's pretty amusing. I mean, you know, you have Alicia Witt's character trying to go meet up with her boyfriend's family for the first time. And there's this very merry mix up where she ends up going to the wrong family with similar names and hijinks and romance ensue. And it's just I feel like they do a lot of those comedic elements really well. I really believe the chemistry between Alicia Witt and her leading man. There are so many fun, like, Christmas traditions that they, uh, I want to say exploit, but that sounds too cynical, that they utilize in, in, you know, making this a very magical Christmas movie. But, like, no Santa magic, just regular human magic. Yeah, they make cookies together and they have the the little uh you know where they drop draw names out of a hat and say nice things about each other. It's just really cheerful and really sweet and and then she goes to the to the real family and it's like we're only going to eat kale and like, <laughs> it's just really fun. And uh yeah, I mean I think that at Christmas most people want something that's a little bit cheerful and and homey and and romantic and it's just kind of part of the season well when i first watched this one i thought this was one of the cheesiest things i've ever seen Uh (laughs) this is probably the cheesiest out of the three so i'm glad i got it over with first fair enough (laughs) well my first thought when i started watching it i i like i typed in all of my thoughts (laughs) So I was basically Mm -hmm. live tweeting, except just typing into my notes app. And the first thing I thought was knowing what I've been told about Hallmark movies, as soon as this one started and the two characters began interacting, I said to myself, well, this is obviously the guy that she's going to leave for the cuter, funnier, poorer guy in the end. Yeah. (laughs) And it's completely true. Yeah. 
it's all about how it's executed though the chemistry between because i mean all romantic comedies in it are basically predictable mm. I, I mean maybe there's a few like my best friend's wedding or something like that that subvert it and do a different 500 days of summer sort of subverts it but for the most part they're predictable but it's all about the chemistry of the couple do you like seeing them together do you enjoy the escapism of a romance with these people in that respect i guess i can see why people like it I just thought it was really cheesy. <laughs> this is probably <laughs> terrible, but when they had the car accident and I just started laughing <laughs> because I was like, how much weirder can this get? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets weirder. <laughs> yeah. It, it did get weirder. <laughs> yeah. But, but I think I think Alicia Witt sells it pretty well. I think she's a pretty good comedic actress. And, and uh, you know, it's nice that they actually, like, gave them a reason for making cookies. Like, it wasn't just, like shenanigans with flour everywhere like they actually had to do it in order to stay up because of the concussion and so there was some character motivation and yeah these movies are what they are and if they're not your thing that's fine but uh but yeah i think there's definitely a market for escapism during the holidays that's romantic and that's cute yeah do you in general like romantic comedies i don't really watch a whole lot of romantic comedies so the only one that I can think of right off the top of my head that I've seen and that I actually liked watching, I haven't seen it for years. It was called Kate and Leopold. Oh, but yeah. That, was, that uh-huh. was like science fiction too. So that's probably why I liked it because I like a lot of science fiction. Uh-huh. So it kind of... You should have told me that. <laughs> I mean, I could have told you that you wouldn't like these movies if I knew you didn't like romantic comedies. Well, I don't I don't have much of a, a gauge of whether I like them or not. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing that... They're, they must not be something that is like my favorite thing because I wasn't that impressed with these, but uh-huh. I mean, they're fine. <laughs> okay. All right. are there, are so there, you're saying you're a romantic comedy novice. Yeah, basically. Oh, fair enough. We'll teach you. We'll teach you. what. To <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. I did write in here halfway through when the twist happens and you find out she's with the wrong family i wrote yeah. i now understand the title and i actually love the twist so uh-huh. i did i did actually like that because it it brought something totally new that i was not expecting into the movie yeah see now you know oh look there's a, there's always got to be a hook because <laughs> you got to get the hook otherwise it's just people falling in love i was also wondering though does that mean that the real Billy's family none of his family talked to him in the entire time that they were there were they just relying on her word that she was engaged to him nobody tried to call him or anything I didn't know yeah. what was going on with that because exactly, yeah. how else would this extremely strange mix-up happen well yeah they I mean and you have to think when was this movie made 2012 or something like that Amber do you know I think so so yeah, I, I mean that sounds right It wasn't quite the cell phone age that it is now. I mean, I know 2012, it's not that long ago, but like things have changed a little bit at least. And so I think it's a little more believable than it is now. Not everybody could like FaceTime all the time back in 2012. And so like, I think there's a little difference there, but they had just barely gotten engaged. So I think that maybe is part of it too. And it didn't seem like his parents were all that invested in like him or their relationship. Like they were pretty focused on the kale shakes and the and the yoga and stuff like that they were they weren't that family focused i don't think no the nice mitchums why weren't the nice mitchums talking to their nice billy son oh right right <laughs> they talk a little bit don't they i mean beforehand like before he shows up like so they they think that she's legitimately engaged to their son so that means that they never talk mm-hmm. to him in the entire time that he's there yeah that's true there i think they do have a couple of throwaway lines where they're like, well, we left him a message, but you know him. He's just the worst at getting his messages, always busy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess that sort of helps. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down, this is after she gets like back together with him before they go to his house. And I wrote, how long before she dumps this guy? His behavior is the most realistic thing in this movie and it makes me hate him. <laughs> <laughs> That's his job. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> a lot of the time, the bad guys are just like, well, I got to pay my bills. And that's usually their biggest fault. But 
I mean, there's no way he would be able to compete with the, like, cookie and, like, you know what our favorite game is? Where we just say nice things about each other, family. <laughs> I mean, that's impossible to defeat. <laughs> then I also wrote that I met his mother and now I changed my mind because he's not realistic at all. No one who grew up some, with someone like his mother would become whatever he is. Rich socialites aren't chakra believing hippies. Because, uh, yeah. I don't know. I didn't, I feel like to be rich, perfectly fair. I don't think I know any rich socialites. <laughs> they could be whatever they want. I feel like rich socialites tend to be very just on trend. And so if, if, if hippy dippy drink your kale stuff was super in i think they would be you know i mean you see it now they're all buying their fabletics and and uh and, uh, and you seem yoga, to be like, you know. <laughs> you seem to be like the kind of person who would just spend all day shopping for crystals and living yeah. in another plane of reality <laughs> you didn't yeah. like you someone must. Who's a, but, uh, but, to a rich guy i don't know it, i could buy it i i mean it's obviously it's a comedy and so it's a little bit heightened for to make you laugh so. and then after that i wrote that after i met his father his behavior does make a lot more sense but still how on earth did the father and the mother get together <laughs> <laughs> the heart wants what the heart wants you know maybe we can make another romantic <laughs> comedy about them <laughs> I don't know that I want to watch a movie about <laughs> them. <laughs> watch it? Hey, why not? Another thing that I wrote was, I know people who have some mildly strange beliefs, or at least I have met some, perhaps not quite as odd as this one, but I don't think a single one of them would have ever, upon meeting someone for the first time, decided to give them a colon cleansing smoothie as a welcome to their home. <laughs> 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 I also just wrote the dad is creepy. <laughs> For, yeah, the dad it was her, his dad. The fiance's dad is bananas. I don't like him. I'm 100% on board with the dad is creepy. Mm -hmm. And after he revealed the whole plan about she was going to be selling her store for millions of dollars, I, I wrote, I think she should take the money, dump this guy, and move her store to this little town and marry the cornball. <laughs> right? This seems like a great plan. Cause like, but one of the things that you learn the more Hallmark movies you watch is that business is trouble. So you yeah. gotta try to stay out of that big business. Yeah. Okay. There are a few exceptions, like if you're if you're putting on a parade or if you are a window dresser or sometimes they'll have sort of like Miracle on thirty fourth street type things where like the the business person turns around and makes the right choice you know in the end uh and really believes in christmas you know so <laughs> but for the most part business is evil yeah and small town yeah, especially like real estate way dangerous don't get into that that you'll turn into a bad person obviously not like some generic stock broker business don't do that yeah <laughs> you'll never find love that way lawyers are very suspect yeah so you know just so you know you're new to the whole romantic comedy game, so we got to give you some ground rules. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, this goes all the way back to the 40s with movies like Christmas in Connecticut, where you have Barbara Stanwyck pretending to be a stay-at-home mom because yeah. she's been writing this article as if she's this, like, stay-at-home mom, and, and this soldier comes and he wants, and wife. like... Oh, yeah, and wife. And wife. Yeah, and and in that movie, there's even multiple babies who get swapped out, and and uh, yes, it's <laughs> the, amazing. The soldiers like, this was a boy yesterday. Why is it a girl? And she has no <laughs> idea how to take care of like. And so this sort of comedy at Christmas, it's just a time honored tradition of kind of romantic. And there's like a whole scene in that movie where they're like riding on a sleigh and there's the snow and she's supposedly going to be getting married or is married to this other guy, but like a heart wants what the heart wants. And anyway, yeah. So, I mean, there's a long tradition for these type of romantic comedies at Christmas that are kind of madcap and fun. That one sounds kind of crazy. I might have to watch that one next year. It's really good. I love it. I mean, it's like legitimately a classic film. Oh, so yeah, definitely. It's not even, it's like, it's on TCM and stuff. You'll be fine. You'll love it. Yeah, it's really good. Or there's, um, I know there's just a lot. There's a lot. Even White Christmas has like these sort of romantic comedy tropes and there's a lot of different ones. 
Well, I guess we could say our final thoughts about this one. I, my final okay. thought was, well, that was a thing. <laughs> not a horrible thing, but not that great either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what did you guys think overall of this one? I can tell you both did like it a lot more than I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. I feel like if you like this kind of movie, this is one that you'll like. It's very well executed for what it is. I, I really like Alicia Witt. I think she's funny. I think she pulls off the humor really well. I think she has good chemistry uh, with, I think it's Mark Weeb. I think it's her partner. I like the guy that's the fiance. He's good. And uh, I don't know. I just think it has lots of charming points and they actually take the time to like give some character motivations for why people are doing things. They're not just like making cookies and getting flour everywhere. They're actually doing it for like a reason, which I appreciate. I thought the ending was really romantic in front of the tree. It was really nice. So yeah, I really enjoy it. I think it's a fun one. Yeah, and I agree. If you like Hallmark movies, odds are you're going to love this one. And if you don't really like Hallmark movies, you can probably handle watching this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's one of the best that Hallmark, you know, comedies has to offer. Uh, good chemistry, amusing little moments, and, you know, just light, silly Christmas fun. Yeah. There are way worse I could have given you. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sparing me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So the next one is Nine Lives of Christmas. And apparently this is your favorite of these three, Amber. Um, it's not just my favorite of these three. It's my favorite Hallmark movie of all time, not just oh, Christmas movies. Okay. And it's like legitimately one of my favorite movies in the history of movies, just because I feel like it's so fun and delightful. And like High Premise, this movie is basically about this gal who wants to be Mary Lee, who's working to become a veterinarian, and she loves cats, and this handsome fireman who finds a cat and needs to figure out how to take care of it. So like surface level, it's not like the most plot intensive film, (laughs) but I think what where this movie really shines is in the chemistry of the characters. I think Kimberly says that he plays Mary Lee is absolutely incredible and her comedic timing is just so great I and mean, even when she's like being really upset over things she's still able to bring an element of humor and I think she just brings a lot to the role that you know in lesser hands this movie would be not that great but every element of this movie works so well together to become really fun plus yeah. I love cats and there's two cats <laughs> Yeah, this one is really sweet. I mean, Kimberly Sussted is is really lovely in it. Uh, she has some motivation. A lot of these Hallmark movies, they will just go meet the high school boyfriend and then like give up all of their career and everything. But she stays pretty motivated with her her goals and what she wants to accomplish throughout the whole movie. And I appreciate that. I think that uh, Brandon Routh is super charming in this. We all know he's Superman, mm-hmm. but he's really good. I think he's a he's a classic leading man in the in the old sense of old Hollywood and and you're I'm not saying he is Cary Grant but he has that kind of old Hollywood leading man romantic appeal in my opinion and uh, I think they have really good chemistry together I think their relationship grows fairly organically and it's not just over like a weekend like a lot of these you know I mean a number of times and you know they end up uh, sharing this house together and working on things and he's like really impressed with her as far as her skills in repairing things and different things they get to know each other and there's some cute moments I love the mistletoe scene is the best uh really great mm-hmm. what's that I just laughed sorry oh, yeah, yeah. but it was like a weird laugh <laughs> everyone was like what was that horrible noise and you've got like his super catty girlfriend who's just really over the top and kind of fun uh yeah it's just romantic and i like the ending is very romantic and i think it it's good it's for i don't know i like romantic comedies so on the whole i like this one way better than the other one (laughs) Fair enough. <laughs> I kind of knew I would from the beginning because Brendan Routh is in it and I like Brendan Routh. I guess I wasn't really expecting him to show up in a Hallmark movie, but I mean, I thought he really helped elevate this one. And the woman who played opposite him, they were both good. Uh, one of the first things that I wrote in my notes here, it says, Cats should not drink milk. Stop perpetuating this myth, Hollywood. <laughs> and then later... <laughs> Later, I wrote, wow, they actually called out the milk thing. Good for you, Hallmark. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and they like said, no, you shouldn't have been feeding your cat milk. So yeah. I thought that was that was good because cats get horrible diarrhea <laughs> if you give them milk. And it's yeah. like, so many movies and cartoons always show cats being fed milk and no, that's not a good thing to be doing. Well, that whole scene in the grocery store is super funny between them about like when she's talking about the cat, the cat diarrhea and everything like that. <laughs> she's trying to give him advice. And yeah. And I also wrote, I like the interactions for this couple a lot more than the last one. Still a bit cheesy, but I think it has a lot better dialogue. Mm. Mm-hmm. They, just, they seemed more like a real couple than the last one to me, I guess. Yeah. Um, and the, the writer of this, Nancy Silvers, is one of my favorite people who ends up working on the Hallmark project. So she's amazing, and I'm glad you said that about the dialogue. So good opinion. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one is pretty simple, but it's just very well executed, I think. It's very charming. For the girlfriend in here, I also wrote, I know it's deliberately manipulative the way they've written this harpy girlfriend to hate cats. But it's totally working because I absolutely hate her because of her hatred of cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I it's also- really fun. They, they always have the, you know, the horrible girlfriend, but like sometimes they can execute it where it's, it's funny. And so it works. I mean, they had the, like the bad girlfriend dialed up to at least an 11. Cause it's like, yeah. tell me she hates animals. She's super full of herself. <laughs> she's the worst. And then she also just gets this girl fired. Cause she's oh, quote right. unquote mean right. to her. It's amazing. She's like, there's no way. No human being is like that. A yeah. little bit later in my notes, I wrote, I want her to fall down a flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. She's, she's the most punchable person in the whole world. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, and the mistletoe scene, a lot of Hallmark movies don't give you a good mid-movie or not, not, it's towards the end, but like it's early in the world of Hallmark for a kiss. And so that's really exciting. Yeah, like before the last 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times they make you wait and there's like a near kiss where like the little kid will like stop them when they're just about to kiss and you're like, oh no. And, uh, and so this one, they actually get a really good kiss and it was very exciting. And then there's the whole scene uh, at the party. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's just funny. I actually wrote about that in my notes too. I wrote, oh look, it's someone who's probably his sister kissing him on the cheek. Causing her to run out heartbroken into the night. Yeah. And that he has a secret girlfriend, just like every other cliched romantic movie, sitcom, <laughs> and or television drama. <laughs> but it's executed so well. I think tropes and, and I guess you could call them cliches, are, I don't think are a bad thing. I think it's about how you use them and how they're executed. And I think that in this case, I think it's executed really well. I actually, I feel bad for her. I feel, you feel for her in that moment because I think the actress sells it and she's pretty upset. <laughs> A little bit later, I wrote, oh, it was the mayor's wife. Well, that's weird. (laughs) (laughs) That's her fundraiser. (laughs) I mean, if I was the mayor's wife and I could just kiss handsome firemen on their cheeks, I still would. (laughs) (laughs) For my very final thought, I wrote, well, this movie was better than the last one. Far less cheesy, better dialogue, and better acting. It was still cheesy, and I probably wouldn't rewatch it. But if you like romantic holiday movies, give this one a go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fair. All the Hallmark movies are cheesy. <laughs> I should have maybe gave you that <laughs> warning before. Like, I kind of knew yeah. that going into it, and that's fine. I don't mind watching a cheesy movie once. That's kind of part of the appeal, really. They're old-fashioned, wholesome. Yeah, this is just one of the most charming, for sure. Uh, it's got great leads that have lots of chemistry that are really good romantic comedy leads. I think the dialogue is pretty well. I think it has some real swoon-worthy moments, which is what you want, like in the... Uh, the uh, mistletoe scene. Uh, I think uh, that it feels satisfying and romantic when they get together at the end. And I like the fact that you have a pretty independent female character who isn't like an ice queen, but is working on her career and is focused on it. I think it gives the relationship a little bit of time to bloom organically, which I appreciate. So there's a lot of things about it that I I think are really well done. It's just really sweet and entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one thing about this that we didn't get a chance to talk about is I think most of the characters, aside from the horrible, horrible girlfriend who we just <laughs> want to hate, even the like tiny characters, they all have a lot of like nuance to them and they're just like fun and well written characters. Even, you know, like the sister who's just sort of like, oh, get a boyfriend, please. Like she still has like fun moments. I think everyone has fun moments, even the horrible, horrible girlfriend. 
And I just really yeah. love hating the horrible girlfriend. It's really yeah. fun. It's like why, why you watch reality television is for terrible people. And yeah. uh, as a reality television person, I really like not liking her. <laughs> well, they like used to make these kind of uh, romantic comedies all the time in Hollywood, uh, but they've just kind of gone out of favor. And hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get some of them back. Hopefully they'll come back. I'm really excited about one coming up with Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. So fingers crossed. But yeah, they used to make romantic comedies all the time. Well, at least you have Hallmark to yes. <laughs> find you over. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this one was very much an improvement on the last one. And if you like romantic comedies, definitely go for this one. Cool. <laughs> okay, so for the last one, I think, did you say that Trading Christmas was your favorite of the three? It's my favorite, yeah. I really like it. It's about these two people that decide to switch houses for Christmas, you and a house share thing. And Faith Ford, who's, I think, great. She's a, you know, a veteran from uh, shows like Murphy Brown. And she's going to Philadelphia, I think, to surprise her daughter and spend Christmas with her daughter. So she switches houses with Tom Cavanaugh, who is so charming and so likable and a veteran, too. And this is all based on a book by Debbie McComber. And I think some of the best Hallmark movies are based on books. Anyway, he's a writer and he's got kind of writer's block. And he had a girlfriend leave him on Christmas Eve, you know, so... He has all these wounded thoughts about Christmas and her friend played by Gabrielle Miller comes to surprise her and of course finds Tom Cavanaugh there. And then uh, his brother played by Gil Bellos comes to check on something with the apartment, sees her. And so you've got these two kind of relationships that grow. And I think both sets have super good chemistry. And I think uh, they have some pretty good heart to heart conversations between them. I think that there's some really good kissing in this movie. Like for Hallmark movie, like Faith Ford and Gil Bellos, like, woo, it's hot. <laughs> It's very exciting to me. Like, <laughs> and I really like her daughter. I think as, you know, she's first, she's thinking that, you know, she's going to be this, you know, independent thing. But then she starts to worry about her mother and Andrew Francis, her boyfriend is one of my favorites. He's really good. I don't know. I just really like all the people in here. I think so. some really touching, sweet moments where the Faith Ford character kind of deals with her grief with losing her husband and, and trying to figure out if she can move on with this new person. And, and I love the conversation that she has with her daughter about it's good that we remember, but I need to be able to also like move on in a, in the sense of be able to have, it's been holding me back for having new relationships. And I think that's a really nicely written, touching little conversation that they have. And I don't know, it's just really cheerful and sweet and funny. And I just really like it. I actually think it's like the holiday with Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz and everything. But to be completely frank, I think I like it maybe even a little bit better because I'm not a big Cameron Diaz fan. So I don't know, I just really enjoy it. Yeah, I really, I enjoy this one as well. I think this is my mom's favorite one. And maybe <laughs> she like Rachel was just like obsessed with kissing. <laughs> but I enjoy this one. I think Tom Cavanaugh and Gabrielle Miller's storyline is more interesting to me. And I can't say why. But, you know, they do have really great chemistry, all four of the leads. And, it, you know, they work through their stuff. And, you know, we basically get twice the romance for, you know, your usual amount. And mm -hmm. it's just fun and cute. And there's, you know, funny moments and sweet moments. And it's a little less over the top funny for me, which is probably why I like it less than you do because you really like more serious things and I'm like just give me a laugh constantly <laughs> but um uh, I think it's a really good one and I mean to be fair I don't know that this has to be a Christmas movie like I don't know why yeah. they're just set at Christmas That's fair. Like, people could trade houses any time of the year but I still really like it and the Christmas elements are worked in nicely so it's good so for this one, my first thought, I wrote this 15 minutes in, was that I thought this so far was the best acted, least cheesy, and best written, and with the most believable dialogue so far. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Woo <laughs> but I also wrote that I was also uh -oh. a bit bored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and for all of my notes, I couldn't remember anybody's names, but Tom Cavanaugh, he plays... Professor Zoom on The Flash. So I just kept uh -huh. referring to uh -huh. Professor Zoom the whole time. <laughs> 
so <laughs> that I liked Professor Zoom versus the kids because the kids the at the cute. door, I liked their sort of light antagonism with each other. They were trying to be neighborly and he he didn't want anything to do with them. And I thought that was funny. In I also, the book, he's a lot meaner. Like he's way more of like a Scrooge type. So this is a I, book? Yeah, it's a book by Debbie McComber. And they definitely, I think they just, you just can't, like Tom Cavanaugh is just too likable to pull that off. So they toned it down quite a bit. He's actually not a writer in the book. He's like a professor. Oh, he's a professor in this and on The Flash. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) In the book, not here. Here he's just a writer. Okay. Well, either way, he's a lot less evil than he is on The Flash. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I also found it interesting that Faith Ford was playing opposite another character named Faith because there was a sitcom years ago called Faith and Hope, and she played Hope against someone named Faith. And there's a character named Faith in this movie. So she's playing with someone who has her name in the movie, but she's not playing her name. And I thought that was funny that it happened again. That is funny. And there were different points in this movie where there was weird music. And I wrote, this horrible kazoo and accordion music is annoying, but in an ironically hilarious way. <laughs> I was like, where did this music come from? It was so strange. They do tend to have really lame Christmas music. A lot of they've got the budgets are higher now than they used to, but it was definitely like elevator music versions of Christmas songs. And sometimes they used to be like really odd Christmas songs. They'd be like, uh, Christmas wreaths are great, you know, and it was just like, that's not a Christmas song. Like, I don't know, because I guess they don't want to pay for royalties. So they just make up like really weird Christmas songs. Another thing. Yeah. Um- <laughs> Sometimes you get some very like, what pop person wrote this song about Christmas? There's one that goes, Mary, Mary, Mary. No, no, that's a real song. Dang it, I can't remember. There is a very poppy one that they have used in about 45 Christmas movies (laughs) that is not a real song, but I like had to go buy it because, I mean, Hallmark (laughs) Channel used it in almost every movie one year. Yeah. Yeah. I'll find it someday and you guys will go. That song is ridiculous, but uh, <laughs> darn it if I'm not tricked into liking it. Yeah. It's but yeah, the music oftentimes is a little rough in the Hallmark movies because they just don't have the budget to buy songs. And I'd rather have, you know, Tom Cavanaugh than a good song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because back when this movie was made, like they were only making like three or four Christmas movies a year i mean it, and 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 then it slowly like rose and rose and rose and now they have two channels and this year it's going to be 34 original christmas movies between the two channels last That's year was 30 real to me <laughs> so yeah <laughs> So they're very, they're doing extremely well and they've done a very good job of honing in on their brand and knowing, you know, and knowing what they, what their consumers want. They, There's they, obviously a market for these, even if I don't really understand it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think it's kind of like you like science fiction because it's like an escape and we like yeah, romances because it's an escape. It's, it's just a different version of fantasy and people yeah. like fantasies. Yeah. I mean, you guys have built a whole podcast around it and you have a following. So there's yeah. definitely a market for it. <laughs> so one thing that I noticed about this movie was aside from some of the main characters, there was a lot of side characters that I did not like. Okay. I did not like her, bo- her daughter's boyfriend. Oh, and, Jonathan. And, that, and, that is, those are fighting words with Rachel. <laughs> Rachel loves no one more on earth than Andrew Francis. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I, I he's thought, great. I thought he was annoying and I hated all his friends. His friends <laughs> were the worst characters in the movie. They're hardly in the movie though at all. I mean I know, but they were friends. annoying enough that I had to write about it in my notes. So <laughs> they, they, they I thought at the very least he's way better than he is in the book. I just have to say that um I well first of all it's played by Andrew Francis, but second of all, in the book he's like this rocker chick, this motor I'm not chick. He's like this motorcycle guy and he's like super rude and like kind of abusive. And here he's like pretty understanding. He's willing to like give up his whole vacation because she wants to just go back to her mom like that's pretty nice and he's like carrying the tree at the end that's pretty he did, nice he did it better <laughs> by the end but like towards the beginning when i wrote the note it was, <laughs> i was annoyed by him oh, also geez. at times i was annoyed by the character faith 
and the character played by Tom Cavanaugh just I thought they argued too much and I was I was annoyed I kept I kept thinking why do they keep arguing they need to get over this because I wrote like multiple times why are they arguing again why are they arguing again (laughs) oh you Jonathan they're arguing because they secretly love each other that's why That's a classic going all the way back to Pride and Prejudice. The classic, yeah, you know, romantic. I get it. I just. I... <laughs> That's a classic going all the way back to Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I also wrote in here, I thought I'd be annoyed by Faith Ford and Professor Zuma's brother too, but they're actually the most likable characters and the most believable as a couple. Yeah. they're really good mm-hmm. i think they were probably my favorite characters in this they just worked together i don't remember his name but do you know that they're doing a reboot murphy brown reboot it's gonna be pretty exciting at least i'm excited i never saw the original i did hear about the reboot i never saw the original yeah. so i don't know enough to be excited i guess it was pretty good another note i wrote i like that he keeps talking about getting a gun because of the kids <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Tom Gavin in this. He's so great. I don't know. Hilarious. This note is later in the movie. It says, I like them better now that they're not fighting. Of course, because they're starting to fall in love. <laughs> Another thought. Because they acknowledge that they've fallen in love. Yeah. That's why. These thoughts I've written down, these all happen more towards the end. It says, why does literally everyone in this movie plan surprise trips? How can they afford to just show up somewhere unannounced? How much money do these people have? I can't even begin to imagine <laughs> something like that oh i i can buy it these people are in their 40s they both like she only has one child and he doesn't have any children like i totally buy that they can take trips like they don't have very much expenses and that seems totally believable to me i also wrote why is everything falling apart for everyone right at christmas all these characters should just get together and have one big christmas in the same place (laughs) except for the daughter's boyfriend i still don't like him (laughs) rude i'm so disappointed in you so disappointed (laughs) and then i wrote at the end one year later i was right they're all having christmas together yeah but the boyfriend's there (laughs) that's true but at least he was slightly less annoying by the end (laughs) at the very end the my last thought was well that was that i guess this was technically the best of the three but i think i liked the cat one better (laughs) yeah you do (laughs) most of the characters in this one kind of annoyed me i think one of the best things i can say about it is that it finally made me want to get back into the flash (laughs) because the whole time i was thinking i I wonder what what they're doing on the flash because tom cavanaugh was in this and it's been like a year since i last watched the flash i need to get back into it fair enough so what were you guys what are you guys' final thoughts on this one I mean, I love this one. I think it's got super chemistry. I think that they, I just love all the kissing scenes. I'm a big fan. I love the ending with Gabrielle Miller on that bus and Tom Cavanaugh getting on and being like, why are we doing this? Like, why are you leaving? And then the, the, the bus driver's like, I have places to go. Can we move on? Like, that was so fun and great. I thought there were really sweet, tender moments between all of them talking about Tom Cavanaugh and his relationship and her trying to kind of figure out why he's writing this character the way that he is, I thought was really, like, felt pretty emotionally true to me and pretty authentic. I really, like I said, I thought that there was some nice moments between Faith Ford's character and her daughter as she's kind of realizing that, like, this grief that she's been holding has been kind of holding her back from experiencing things in life. I thought that was nice and I felt a pretty true moment between them. I, I really like, like, when he gives her the earrings and that's super romantic and he's like, Oh, I'll just stay home and watch, you know, watch my games or whatever on Christmas. And then you see them at his door being like, we're not going to allow you to be like that. And they've got a Christmas tree. It's just so cheerful and so great. I even like the fact that she ends up telling her daughter, like, we're just having cereal and fruit. Like it's time to let some of those things go like that have been holding us back, holding me back and we're moving on to something new. I think it's pretty well written. I know. I just really like it. So it's my favorite. I think it's better, you know, than the holiday. I really do. Yeah. And I think it's 
um, just like a really fun show, but not as fun as Nine Nights of Christmas. So I would always recommend Nine Nights of Christmas more. <laughs> That's certainly fair. They're, they're both really solid, in my opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't say any of these were terrible movies. They're just not the kind of thing I usually watch. And I guess I'm not used to watching things that are cheesy on purpose. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So maybe that's probably part of my problem. <laughs> I was expecting, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah, these weren't terrible. They're just, I guess, not exactly my cup of tea, but I can totally see why everyone who loves these, loves these. Okay. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Uh, this one was pretty good. Some of the characters kind of annoyed me, but it was not bad. It was pro- it was definitely the best acted best written of the three but i still think i liked the cat one better (laughs) i just i like brandon routh i like cats that's probably why i liked that one better (laughs) fair enough (laughs) it's a really good one so no complaints for me okay well i think that's all unless you guys have something else you want to say about these nope I think we're good. Check them yep, out. I'm good. It's Christmas in July right now on Hallmark. So they either have been, have aired or will be airing all, I think all three of these. So uh, check it out. Okay. Do you guys and all wanna, three are available on DVD. All three of these. Do you guys want to plug all your socials? <laughs> yeah. So you can follow our podcast at Hallmark East Podcast on, we have a whole channel on YouTube and on all the major uh, podcasting apps, Stitcher, iTunes, and SoundCloud. And uh, we try to live tweet at every single movie every weekend and and there's different shows on hallmark the good witch we just finished uh we'll be starting chesapeake shores soon there's one called the heart uh and so we cover all of that uh we have interviews with talent we got to interview kimberly sustin from the nine lives of christmas which was really fun so that's on our uh, up on our podcast and uh so yeah i think if you like and we don't take it too seriously we're pretty fun i think we just uh, we're terribly unfun <laughs> 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 and uh we have a pretty good time doing it so check it out okay well i guess that'll be all um i'm not opposed to watching more of these i'm probably going to do the same christmas in july thing next year so maybe you guys will have to recommend some more next year (laughs) we can do this again maybe you might like the more serious ones i don't know some people do maybe you're not into the romantic comedy ones they have ones that are more tear jerkers it could be i mean Mm -hmm. we can always watch them and find out (laughs) Yeah, hey. Amber yeah. probably won't join us for that one, but I'm happy to <laughs> introduce you to <laughs> But yeah, they have ones like November Christmas is a really good one, or their uh, Season of Miracles, or the Christmas Choir. I think those are three really solid ones. Okay, well. And I don't think in those three, they, they don't even have a romance in any, either of those three. Maybe in Season of Miracles, I can't remember. That's why I'm out on those. <laughs> <laughs> so... You're only here for the kissing. <laughs> well, I'm here for I the mean, kissing. I mean, Rachel's there for the kissing. I'm there for the falling in love. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Okay, cool. Well, oh. you guys are awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys, well, for joining me on this. Well, no problem. We'll have fun. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks again to Rachel and Amber for joining me, and I'll have links to their podcasts and social media below. And if you're one of their fans who came specifically for some bonus Hallmarkies content, then you're going to want to stick around because later this week the Hallmarkies are coming back for a brand new episode. The Hallmarkies podcast has grown and expanded a lot in the past year, and it's not just Rachel and Amber anymore. This year Rachel will be back, but she's bringing one of her new co-hosts with her, and they've chosen three new Hallmark films for us to talk about. I'm really looking forward to this one, partly because of the guests, but also because I think I actually liked their picks a lot more this year. So we'll see you later this week for more Christmas in July with the Hallmarkies podcast.